All right, dear friends, it is that time again for my eyeshadow palette collection. But these are my high-end eyeshadow palettes. I did just upload my luxury eyeshadow palette collection. Now we're moving on to high-end right here, as you can see. And I will have an affordable one as well later on next week. But I just wanted to show you everything for shock factor purposes. It will not look like this the whole video. But if you want to see my high-end eyeshadow palette collection, then just keep watching. So we have my cheap sheet on the floor that is all wrinkled. Um, it's the best I can do. Okay, so there were a couple brands that were kind of bridging between high-end and luxury. I have NARS and Huda, which I feel like can fit in both categories. But we're going to start off with NARS. So the first one that I have is the Erdem palette. This is an old one, and honestly, I should declutter. I'm saving it for if I ever do a NARS rankings video, but I never use this. It is very cool-toned, but it's just very uninspiring to me. The next one that we have here is the NARS Ignited palette, and honestly, looking at these i haven't used my nars palettes in forever they've just been kind of uninspiring for me but i really do like this one because of the glitter shades uh for the time like when i bought this it was pretty exciting for me i didn't have a lot of eyeshadow palettes like this but now that my collection has grown extensively this one just isn't as exciting to me as it used to be but it is still a nice palette so we have the skin deep palette and i think this was a favorite and for a good reason these are just good everyday colors you can kind of mix it up up with some of the fun shimmer pop so i do very much enjoy this palette and it is very wearable and versatile so this is a really good one from nars so the next one that we have here is the atomic blonde palette honestly it looks like the skin deep palette but a baby version when i got this i liked it i haven't been majorly impressed by it but it's a really good travel palette if you're just looking to do very simple looks so this one's kind of a nondescript palette but i used to love the formula of nars as you can see i haven't really purchased from them as much anymore because their palette have bored me but this one kind of started their boring era now this one i remember how excited i was when i purchased it this is the loaded palette and this was for nars kind of different at the time i mean i know it's everyday colors but these were very good colors everybody loved these colors and this was a very very good palette i feel like all of my nars palettes are so old but i really do enjoy this palette a lot it's very pretty again haven't used it in a while but looking at it i haven't opened it up in a long time and i kind of forgot about it but it's very pretty then we have the Wanted palette. This one, oof, okay. This one actually is an inspiring palette to me. I think it's very pretty. It's one of my favorites from NARS. You have that really fun glitter formula that NARS make, which isn't the best. It's not Pat McGrath by any means, but it is very pretty and very glittery on the lid, especially with a glitter glue. I feel like all their palettes kind of look the same, but I have to say of all those palettes that look the same, this one's probably my favorite. So these next two palettes are very exciting to me. I really enjoy these. So this one is the Quartz palette, and these are like their mini six pans. These, oops, I believe you can still purchase Purchase, and I would love for them to expand on this range because I feel like the quality is really there And by the way, we have the suede palette. This one is my favorite It's kind of a great everyday neutral more cool based palette. So we have quartz and neutral I really enjoy these palettes. I think they're really great for the value. I think the quality on these seems to be much more Exceptional as far as NARS goes sometimes they can have a little bit of inconsistencies with formula But these are a thumbs up and I highly recommend these these are older But you can still get them and they're so really good. All right, so now it's time to move on to my Huda Beauty palette. I have collected quite a lot, so this is going to be a long portion, but we'll start off with the bigger palette. So the first one that we have, this is the Rose Gold Palette Remastered. So this was the second version of their original palette. This formula is significantly better. This was a very unique palette for the time because of the textures, and I actually really love this palette. I think it is beautiful. I love these two shades right here. This pink diamond shade is actually one of my favorite shades ever, one of my favorite pink shades. I feel like when it comes to Huda, it is kind of a split opinion. 50% love it, 50% hate it. I'm on the love it side. I really enjoy their big palettes. I think she curates some of the best palettes. So the next one that we have is the new nude palette. And this one runs extremely pink for it being a nude palette. But this, again, at the time, was pretty new and different because of all of the different textures, the textured shades, and the glittery shades, which are now done 
uh, in a lot of different brands. But I do really enjoy this palette, but just know it's a pink palette. I don't really care for the concealer base, but the palette itself is very nice. This, by the way, looks like it's never used because I gave an old one away and then I missed it and repurchased a new one. So that is why it looks unnew, but really gorgeous palette. Just very, very pink. The next one that we have is the Desert Dusk. This one is one of my favorites of the new palettes. This one is very, very warm. I really like the different finishes here. She kind of played with some duochromes, but I like this one because it's a more warm version in her collection. And I really, of course, was taken by the little purple section that we have here. So it's not my most used from this line, but it is very pretty. Then we have the newest of her big ones, Mercury Retrograde, which originality wise, this one is my favorite in her line, just because you have a lot of variety as far as the shades go. Pretty original as a palette also, and it's just a really pretty one. I love this one. If you're not afraid of color, I definitely recommend this one. All right, so now we're going to move on to the mini obsessions. I have quite a few. She's released a few different lines. We're going to start off with the OG. I have two left. <laughs> so we have the Smoky Obsessions here, which as you can see, has gone through it. I just love the shades in here. This used to be a black shade, but really beautiful lid colors here right up my alley. I really enjoyed this one a lot. And then the other one that we have is Mauve Obsessions, which I don't know, this doesn't really scream super mauve to me, but it is a really pretty warm mauve palette. I didn't reach for this one too much. I didn't like it as much as I liked the smoky one, but this one still is very pretty. She also came out with a line of the jewel toned ones, and this release is what kind of made me fall in love with these mini obsessions. So we have Emerald Obsessions here, which is a really fun one, which was the main purpose of me purchasing these mini obsessions. I love how fun these colors are. This is such a unique palette. I don't have a lot of palettes with shades like these, but I really enjoy the Emerald one just because of the originality factor. One of my favorites is also the Topaz Obsessions because I find the tones in here to be very unique. It almost has like a mustard undertone to all of the colors and it really is a very stunning and unique palette and I love all the looks that I've created with this one. Ruby Obsessions isn't one that I've gotten a lot of use out of just because I don't really wear warm tones as much, especially red as a warm tone, but this is a very unique palette in my collection as I just don't have a lot of palettes that are basically pure red. So this one is unique. And then of course I had to pick up the purple one, Amethyst Obsessions. Again, very unique colors I feel in here, just a lot of variety, I guess more so is what I'm going for. So I do enjoy this palette a lot. Uh, as you can see, I've made some dents in some of the shimmer shades because I find them to be extremely beautiful. I don't reach for these jewel toned palettes as much, but I did enjoy my time with them. Last summer, she also came out with some neon obsessions, which by the way, didn't purchase the pastel, not interested in them. They just don't seem that good quality to me from what I've seen, but I wasn't too impressed with these ones either. So I feel like the quality wasn't that great. So this one is, I think it's the green obsessions. This one was probably the worst of the three as far as quality goes. Everything down here was extremely sheer. It just wasn't worth the quality. The only good colors were these two here. The rest kind of fell flat and it had so much potential to be a pretty palette, but I just wasn't crazy about that one. And then we have the pink obsessions, the neon pink obsessions. I felt like just on the eyelid, most of these shades looked the same. There wasn't a lot of dimension in the eye. You can't really differentiate too many of the colors, but if you want a hot neon pink eye, this is the way to go, but just know that's the only look you're gonna get. From that release, I have to say the orange neon obsessions is probably my favorite. This one I felt like you could actually create different looks with. I feel like the colors actually had pigmentation to them as well. So if you were looking into that line, this one is by far the best one that you can get. And you really do get some fun neon colors and you get a bit from the other two palettes as well. So not only do you get orange, you get pink as well, and you get yellow and that lime kind of color. So this one is the way to go for sure if you are looking into neons. She also came out with these nude ones, which are by far her best in my opinion. They're fantastic quality. So I actually just mentioned this one in my spring favorites. This is the Nude Light, and it is a very, very pink palette, but I think it is stunning for the spring, and it really is such a beautiful palette. It's not going to be flattering on everybody, but it's so pretty. I really like this one. It even gets better at the nude medium one. This one is incredible. A little bit more rich, a little bit more warm. The shimmers are stunning. The mattes are blendable. They are very pigmented. Just 
rich in pigmentation beautiful one this one's probably i think the most universal and the one that most people are going to love and then we have the nude rich one and the nude rich one i mean still is stunning on me it is quite a rich palette but i love that these were curated for different skin tones i think if you have a deeper skin tone this is wonderful so all of her nudes thumbs up they're amazing so let me run through abh i have quite a lot i want to go through her big norvina palettes because i collected all of those i just it was a weird time for abh but i like them i'm not gonna lie so this is the original norvina one palette this one is my favorite of the trio and it's mostly because it's purples i'm not gonna lie in these big palettes the quality is there the pigmentation is there and i find them to be a very inspiring palette this one is volume two i enjoy the packaging of these a lot too and this one is probably the one that i reach for the least because I don't really care too much for blues but if you like blues and creating blue based looks this is a great way to go but again the quality is there then I have volume three which I think is a crowd favorite now I do have a video on each of these palettes creating multiple looks so if you are interested I would check those out because the amount of shades can be overwhelming but truthfully I know it's easy to kind of poop on these but they are super good going into their more traditional palettes I of course covet the master palette by mario i just need them to re-release it i don't know why they did nicole guerrero before this because we need this back the quality in here is spectacular and you can create a look so easily with this palette without even having to think i don't use it because you can't get it again and i need to use it but it's amazing we have the original norvina palette here this one is a top pick for my spring eyeshadows because it's super neutral but you can get pops of spring in here this one is underloved in my opinion and underloved by me as well because it is a really pretty palette but it just falls behind all of the others a new one from them this is the amrezi palette i will be very honest with all the releases at, at the time that this came out this one kind of fell to the back of my need to be used so i've only used this a few times but i do love it i think at first i was very uninspired by this palette but as i've dug into it i find the textures to be very unique for abh she really dove into different dimensions that abh hasn't touched so i really do like this palette it is quite glam of course we have jackie Ina, which you can get on sale today if you want to pick it up a favorite of mine from abh i just think it is a wonderfully curated palette it's an inspiring palette it works great for a lot of different skin tones and you can create a lot of different looks there's so much variety with these shades so this is a great one riviera this is definitely an old one i don't think anybody was really too crazy about this palette because i mean who needs all of these shades now there are some beautiful shades in here which is why i continue to keep this palette and i don't think it's a bad palette at all i think it's really pretty for this summer and honestly i think this summer i want to dig it out more and give it some more love i created some very pretty looks with this guy but of course it's not the easiest to reach for as far as tones prism palette in my opinion this one was just kind of unnecessary i bought this when i was newer to abh so i didn't have a lot to begin with but the longer this sits in the collection the less i feel i need it i mean the quality is there don't get me wrong it's just a boring palette to me personally i don't really feel inspired by this one carly bible this is another newer one that is on sale right now this one didn't really get its moment to shine but that being being said it really isn't my favorite palette from abh the colors in here just aren't for everybody to be quite honest i think it's a beautiful palette and i do enjoy the colors in here a lot and i need to use this more i think i've only used this once if i'm being honest because again it got lost in the shuffle of all the other releases that had come out at the time so i do want to use this more but it's definitely a different palette for abh which is not a bad thing but it's not my favorite we have good old subculture which i do like i mean i see where people had problems with this i do think this color story is so unique that it did make up for the kind of weird things that you had to work with as far as this palette goes but honestly i really did enjoy this palette it just took a little bit of extra time to create a look such a good color story classic modern renaissance this collects a lot of gook because i use it in my makeup kit but such good quality shadows i mean i'm not a big warm lover so i probably don't love this as much as everybody else but it is a very nice palette and i do dig into it a lot as far as weddings go of course soft glam this one is one of my favorites really a classic the best shades the only shades that you really need i can't say enough good things about this palette 
but if you don't have it in your collection, I would highly recommend picking this up. And then, of course, Sultry, which is everything packaging-wise, and if you're a cool tone neutral gal, you will love this one. This is currently my favorite palette in the ABH line because I'm so into cool tone neutrals. So it took me a while to purchase this. I actually purchased this months after it released because I wasn't so into cool tone neutrals at the time, but this needs re-released. I feel like this came out at the wrong time. If this released now, people would be going nuts for it now that cool tones are coming back in. So that is all I have for ABH. We're going to move on to Too Faced. So as the years have gone on, I've definitely fell out of Too Faced. Back in the day, I used to be a stan and would order all of their palettes. I've definitely slowed down, but they have some key items that I do really enjoy. We're going to talk about their tin palettes first, but I have the Sweet Peach palette. This is kind of an OG for Too Faced. It's been in their line for quite some time. I'm not too crazy about this palette. I've never really used it a lot, but it is such a classic palette from Too Faced that I feel the need to keep it. It smells really good and the colors are basic, which is can be a good thing or a bad thing. That's up for you to decide, but I don't use this that much and I should use it. Okay. Of course, I have the chocolate bar palette. This actually was used quite a lot for me a couple years ago. Now, I did purchase this later than everybody else. Like, years after it had come out, I purchased them on sale. Uh, this is a really good palette. I do feel it is a bit outdated, but, I mean, these are colors that you can use. I have the semi-sweet as well, which I do like a little bit better than the original. And I think that has to do with the peanut butter shade. And you have some more cooler tones in here. So, I've always kind of reached for semi-sweet more. But same deal as chocolate as far as my feelings. This one was a good one though. I still love this. This is the chocolate gold palette and the metallics in here are incredible. So this is a majority metallic foiled kind of shadow palette but I still love this palette to this very day. I think the colors are so rich and pigmented and shimmery and it smells delicious. This one I can't lie. This is this is a good one. This one is the newest Too Faced palette that I've purchased. This is the Gingerbread Extra Spicy. This came out over the holidays and honestly, I was pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed this palette. I really love the look that I had created with this palette. It smells really good. The quality of this is truly spot on for Too Faced. It's one of their good formulas. It's a very easy to maneuver through palette. Very easy to create looks. You can get some variety in looks as well. I enjoy this. I thought I had the regular Gingerbread palette. I, no, I do. I know I have it. I must have forgot to grab it, but I do have the original one, but I think I like this one better. This is an older one. This is the Best Year Ever 2018 palette. So this is from the holidays in 2018, and it's just a big palette. I can't seem to let this one go because honestly, I do enjoy the quality of this, and I think it's just good classic colors in here. I don't reach for this very often, as you can imagine, but it is a very pretty palette, and there's something about this palette that I can't get rid of, so I hold on to it. We have the Too Faced Pretty Rich and this one had pretty mixed reviews. Honestly, I like it. I just love glitter so much that I couldn't give this up. I think there's inconsistencies in this palette. I don't think the formula is the best. I think the mattes can be a bit harder to work with and the shimmers are a bit lackluster, but as a whole, I do enjoy the looks that I've created with this palette and I do have to agree it's not their best work, but I like it enough to keep it in my collection. The last one from Too Faced, this is a good one. This is the Just Peachy Mattes. I love this palette. It is very good quality. It's an all matte palette, but the mattes are just so lovely. They blend beautifully. I feel like every color has its place. They look different on the eyes. They don't blend into each other. This is just an overall good palette from Too Faced that is kind of forgotten, but it is still really good. So we're going to move into Tarte, and I don't really collect Tarte. I'm not super into the brand. I do have four palettes, and honestly, most of them I don't really care for. So we have the Rainforest of the Sea Volume 2. This one I keep because because this is the palette that I used when I went to makeup school and this was what I used for my final look. It's just very basic colors. Really actually not very good quality though. Like these mattes get stuck on the eyelid and you can't blend them, but I just can't get rid of it. This one I can't get rid of because it's so pretty. This is the volume three from the Rainforest of the Sea collection. And I just love all the different tones of champagne. I haven't dug into it too often. I got this in a box. Sea charm, but I feel like the quality of this isn't that good. I'm gonna need to test it out again, and if the quality sucks still, I'm gonna get rid of it because I just don't need it unless it works. This one, though, I do really enjoy. This I don't believe they sell anymore. This is the Make Believe in Yourself palette. This is 
so good you guys i love the quality here i love the colors i use this a lot when i was in college and i would use this for like fairy looks for halloween i enjoy this palette a lot i'm definitely going to be keeping this for a while in my collection because i just love the colors and the quality of this this is the best i have from tarte uh, this one i purchased this holiday season this is the rainforest of the sea foil fingers palette and i love their foiled formula i will admit i've only used this a couple of times but i love this their foil formula is incredible i especially love these three shades i think they look stunning on the eyelid this palette nobody talked about but it is gorgeous. Last I saw it was on sale and I don't know why because these colors are wearable but they're still that amazing formula. I have a couple from Urban Decay. I used to have so many Urban Decay palettes. They've been decluttered over the years because let's be real Urban Decay isn't what it used to be but I do have the Naked Heat palette which I do enjoy though every look that I do with this palette looks the same but I do like it. I'm not so into warm shadows anymore but when I want a good warm look this is where I will run and I feel like everybody hates this palette but I'm one of the few people who enjoy it. This is the Naked 3 palette. This has stood the test of time as far as beating out all of my other Naked palettes and continuing to stay in my collection. This was actually repurchased as well because I enjoy these tones so much for a simple, cool look. I just really enjoy this palette even though everybody hates it. I think it's nice. I also have a couple from Fenty Beauty. This is their very first eyeshadow palette. This is the Galaxy palette and everybody did not like this palette. I really enjoyed it. I think this came out at a time where nobody really knew how to use glitters but I've been using glitter glue since day one so I've known I've always loved this palette. So I feel like if this came out now more people would know what to do with this palette but it is stunning. I love the shades that you have in here and you can really amp up a look with this palette so I will continue to keep this in my collection. I love it. And then we have the Moroccan Spice. I feel like, I don't know, they manufactured way too many of these because they've been, this palette has been on sale forever and wasn't it supposed to be limited edition? I feel like Fenty doesn't have a knockout eyeshadow formula. Like these are good. They get the job done but this palette doesn't really inspire me. I don't really think it's that special and I guess there's a reason they haven't come out with another eyeshadow palette since this. I know they have the minis, but they haven't come out with like a big one and I'm not really moved by this palette if I'm being honest. I like Galaxy better. I have three palettes from Dominique Cosmetics. We'll start off with the OG, the Latte palette, which is by far my favorite in her line. I love this palette. I think it's just a great classic palette. This shade in particular is one of my all-time favorite eyeshadows ever, Espresso, but it's just really good classic colors. These are colors that I can very easily grab for, so I really love this palette. It is one of my favorites in my collection. I also have the Berries and Cream palette. I don't use this as much as I thought I would because it is more purple based and I love purple tones but it's just not a palette that I reach for a lot. I think it's good. I think there's some shades that work better than others. It's not the best palette in the world but it is very pretty and she did a good job with it. And then I have Rustic Glam and I just love this packaging. I think it's so pretty and I think the colors in here are extremely unique. It's just a cool vibe as far as the palette goes. This palette really makes me feel very inspired. I like the quality of it. I think overall Dominique Cosmetics does a great job with her formula and I have enjoyed having this in my collection as well and I do need to pull this one out more because it's so unique. And then we have Melt Cosmetics. You guys ask me a lot about Melt and I'm not super into their brand. I don't know everything there is to know about Melt but I do have these two palettes. So I have the Smoke Sessions palettes and I really like this palette because I just love greens and I feel like this is a really fun green palette, very original, and I really like the quality of the shadows in here. Then I also have the Gemini palette, which I do like and it is very pretty. I mean, half of it's green, half of it's neutral. It's a really beautiful palette, kind of my aesthetic. Don't use this one very often, honestly. I've used the Smoke Obsessions more, but they're both very pretty palettes and I think they have a good formula going for them. Next up, up, we have MAC. My collection has definitely depleted over the years, but I have kept some key palettes that I enjoy. So we have Queen Supreme. This one is one of my favorites. It has also beat out all of the others of this kind because I used to have a lot of palettes like these and I've decluttered them over the years, but I love this one because I love this highlight. And the metallic shades are pretty, but for me it's all about the highlight in here, so that's kind of why I keep that. This palette from Patrick Starr from one of his collaborations 
collaborations. This is Stay With Me. To be quite honest, I don't think I've ever used this. I got it in a set with other items in the collection and I love the blush that was in this collection, but I haven't used this. I also used to really enjoy their Times 9 palette. This is the purple Times 9 and I like it because you get the MAC formula in a really tiny form and I enjoy this quite a lot. I like the purples here. I, you guys know I love purples and I find this palette very easy to work with so I've enjoyed this one. And we have my all-time favorite MAC palette. This is the Natural Vice palette from this beautiful marbled collection that came out last year. It's a basic palette, it is, but these are really good colors. I use this in my bridal kit because these are perfect wedding colors. So that's mostly what I use this palette for. I don't use it personally anymore, but I did use this a few times on myself. It is a really good palette from MAC. I do enjoy the color story here. I have a couple from Persona, which these were sent to me, and honestly, I never got the chance to use these. I don't know how. I think this kind of fell to the bottom of the drawer and I never got to use them but we have this is the copper palette these are really stunning though and they came in a beautiful kit their highlighters are amazing so i do need to try these i think these are going to be awesome and this is the pink palette so she has a lot of other palettes in her line but these are so cute because they're like monochromatic beautifulness so i need to use these i have a few palettes from pure which again is kind of an uninspiring brand but i do enjoy the palettes that i do have this i got into a boxy charm it's soiree diaries and i mean these are amazing colors colors. I really love this palette. It's just like a thoughtless palette. It has every color you need. This is a really good one. Then we have the Visionary palette, which I mean, how stunning is this palette? I cannot seem to declutter this. It is so pretty. I've tried because I don't use it, but then I open it and I'm like, no way I can declutter it. This is beautiful. And then we have the Creator palette, which again, is a very unique palette. Again, just very shiny and I enjoy shiny things and I can't declutter shiny things. So this one continues to stay in my my collection as well and they are good quality they really are pure as a brand doesn't inspire me so then i never want to reach for pure products but these are good i also used to have a love affair with Lorac, and over the years i've decluttered their palettes i used to have like every single one but these are the ones that are still in my collection so we have the mega pro this is just the original these are very nice colors these used to be my favorite palettes of all time kind of looking at this this palette doesn't really inspire me so much anymore but it does have good colors we also have the Lorac Mega Pro 3. This one is my favorite of the Megas and I don't know if I can ever get rid of it because it just has such good colors. A really great range from light to rich and you get such a good variety of shimmers that I really enjoy and I think the mattes are perfect between neutral, cool, and warm. This is definitely my favorite of the Mega Pros except it's white and dirty. Then I have kind of the long little mini pros but they aren't really mini. So this is the Lorac Pro 2. I used to be obsessed with the one but I did have to declutter it and this this one is very close to needing decluttered. It's an extremely cool tone palette, so I want to hold on to it a little bit longer because I do love cool tones at this current moment. I really enjoy the formula of these shades. I think they are beautiful. I haven't used these in a while though, so I need to see if they still live up to the standards that I used to hold them by. Their shimmers aren't incredible, but it's their mattes that really are amazing. And then I also have the Lorac Pro 3. I know they've come out with another one since then. Oh my gosh. I promise you I'm not dirty. I don't know how that got so gross. <sighs> Those haven't spoken to me, but this is the classic three. This was kind of my everyday makeup palette in college because it has just great everyday colors that anybody is going to need. This is a great palette for beginners. And then I have the unzipped palette, which I mean, look how, truly how beautiful this palette is. Again, a really great formula. This one was actually kind of one of my favorites because I just love the tones in here. I love the big pans. And this is so stunning. I feel like this needs to be popular again because just looking at it oh my goodness so this is the newest Lorac purchase for me this is from their Rachel Zoe collaboration and this is their Hollywood glamour mini palette and look how cute it is now it was pretty affordable especially for Lorac and it's really stunning and I've got to be honest with you guys I haven't done anything but swatch this so I can't talk too much about this palette other than it's so pretty I got it on sale for really cheap and I haven't dug into it because it hasn't been on my priority list but it is a really stunning palette so I'm going to start grabbing into my Jeffree Star Cosmetics palettes. So this first one that I have is from the Shane Dawson collaboration. And this is the Mini Controversy. Honestly, not too moved by this one. I don't really care for the color story of this one. I feel like this literally is random eyeshadows put into a palette. I think individually some of the colors are great. But as a whole, I can't just grab this palette and create a look. We have the Blood Sugar palette. I love this one. I think it is beautiful. This one is definitely one of the more wearable 
adorable of his palettes and I mean it's a beautiful he has a really great formula purples and neutrals and you get some warm tones as well I think it's a very well curated palette and if you're looking for something more wearable in the Jeffree Star line so it's not completely wearable this is a great starter palette to go for on the complete opposite spectrum we have the blue blood which I do not recommend if you are looking for a wearable palette but you know he really went in there with a all blue palette a lot of brands can't really commit to a full blue palette because nobody's going to buy it but I appreciate the fact that he went there he really did uh, this isn't my favorite in his collection I really do struggle with some of the pressed pigments I don't really care for his pressed pigment formula I just find them so extremely difficult to work with it is a blue palette I didn't expect it to be easy to work with I like to grab into this palette when I need a certain blue because this truly has all of those shades but of his line this isn't my favorite I also just grabbed the thirsty palette now this one wasn't amongst his most loved but truly I enjoy this palette a lot for me I find it to be pretty wearable and very easy to create a wearable look what I'm obsessed with is this middle row right here I think it's such a pretty formula these glittered foiled shades are stunning you have pops of colors that are fun for the summer and yeah I don't know I really love this palette and I know it wasn't everybody's favorite but it's inspiring to me it's pretty and I'm comfortable with it as well so this is actually one of my favorites from him this is my newest Jeffree Star baby this is the bloodlust palette and y'all know I really love it this is one of my favorites that he's ever come out with I think the quality is killer I think the curation is wonderful I feel very inspired by this palette purple is my favorite color so to start off it's purple <laughs> so I'm gonna love it I think he has every tone of purple that you need and he also adds some fun pops that really do complement purple as well. So if you're looking for a purple palette from his line, I really enjoy this one a lot. Jawbreaker is also a really nice one. I want to say this is amongst my favorites as well, but now I'm saying every single one is my favorite, but truly, I think this is such a fun palette. I love the whole concept behind it. I think the colors in here are really great quality, and this palette overall is an extremely inspiring palette. It definitely can get overwhelming because there's just a lot of shades. It's a lot to look at, but this is a great palette to accompany other palettes a really great rainbow palette and I just I really like it okay I think it's a really nice palette I featured it in my spring favorites because I think this top row especially you can create really beautiful fun spring looks so if you're looking for a colorful palette this is a great one to go you can actually reorganize and move the pans to really create a cool kind of gradient I've seen a lot of people do that online so I would suggest looking into that if this does overwhelm you but overall this is a really fun release from him that I enjoyed thoroughly this is one of his first palettes if not his first this is the androgyny palette which by the way I saw this was on sale at Morphe but neutral palette this one's really nice you also get some funky jewel tones kind of down here more muted also gives me a little bit of subculture vibes as well if you're into that color story but I like this palette a lot I think it was a great first palette from his line the pans are huge the colors are beautiful and I don't know it's just a really nice muted palette but also kind of cool but also funky from him and lastly we have the conspiracy palette. Let me pull this out. I keep it in its box because I think the box is cool, but I mean also the package is cool. Um, okay. Don't riot against me here, but this palette's cool. Like, I like this palette. I think the quality is there. The color story, not my favorite. I mean, I watched the whole series, I watched everything, and I think individually, again, the colors in here are great, but as a whole, this palette doesn't inspire me. I don't think there's enough cohesion amongst the shades. I just feel like a lot are randomly placed, or like a few go together, but then a few don't, and it's not a bad palette. It's just, for me, I don't find myself wanting to grab for it a lot. It's not my favorite of his, but I mean, it is it is a unique palette, so I'll give it that. I have three palettes from Dose of Colors. So the first one I have talked a lot about on my channel. This is the Katie and Desi Friendcation palette and this is amongst my favorite palettes ever. I just think the colors in here are very easy to work with. I love the different textures and dimensions that this palette has and it's just good colors that I gravitate towards as far as every day. So I have used this palette a lot. I really like the formulation here and overall love this one. We also have the Dose of Colors and I Love Sarah He collaboration. Not as good as Frankation, but you know, for a little six pan, this isn't bad. I think individually the colors in here are, are beautiful, but I don't feel like I can create a ton of looks with this palette. So that's the only downside. But because the colors in here are so individually pretty, I do pair this with other palettes. But as a whole, it, you can't really create 
too much of a cohesive look. All the looks that you can create with just this palette kind of look the same, but the quality in here is great and the individual colors are beautiful, so not a bad palette at all. This one I got in a boxy charm, and these are kind of their classic kind of five pan eyeshadow palettes, and people love these. They love the quality of these. I can't lie, I never used it, and this is why I have canceled my boxy charm subscription since then, but I've kept this around because, I mean, these are really good colors and I've heard good things about it, so maybe one day we'll dig into this. You know what? Or I could just do a dose of colors eye pairing these two together. All right, I'm going to move on to my Kylie Cosmetics. I can't lie, kind of a guilty pleasure. I do enjoy purchasing her palettes every now and then, so we have some of her original nine pans, and as you can see, I am an OG. I have some of her OG palettes, so this one is the Burgundy palette. Honestly, I really like her formula. I don't know if it's still the same nowadays, but, but these are really good kind of wearable colors, truly, if you like these burgundy base. And I also really loved for a long time her bronze palette. This one is such a good go-to palette. It really has every tone that you need. It's so easy to work with. I mean, these are good palettes. I'm not gonna lie. Definitely a guilty pleasure. I have to admit, I liked these. This one, I think, is the newest palette that I bought. And I got it when it was on sale at Ulta. This is the Blue Honey palette. And it's not as original as I thought it was. I mean, individually, I can definitely dupe these colors within my own collection. But I don't know. I just really like the vibe of the palette altogether. I think the quality is okay. There's something about those original two palettes that I just love so much. I think the quality is better in those. But I just like overall the kind of look I can create with this palette. So that's why... I purchased this one. We have the Sipping Pretty, which I've actually mentioned numerous times on my channel because I really like it. I brought this on vacation with me and I enjoyed bringing it. I didn't regret it. I just think you can create a lot of different looks, especially for vacation. You can get those neutral, light, everyday looks, but then you can also, you know, wear fun makeup because you're never going to see those people again anyways. So I enjoyed this palette a lot. Honestly, I think it's a really good palette and, you know, not amazing quality, but it gets the job done for sure and it's super cute. The last one that I have is the I guess it's the I Want It All palette. This is from years ago, and I can't lie, definitely bought it for the packaging because pink glitter, I'm here for it. The colors themselves, I don't ever grab for these. I don't really care for this color story, but I love this blush and I love this highlight. So I really do keep this palette around for the packaging and for these two. I believe this was from her first Valentine's Day collection, and it's a cute palette, but it, it does kind of remind me of kids' makeup, but I guess I'm a kid. I don't know, because I like it. I also have three palettes from KKW. I like her brand. I think she has good stuff. I don't have a large collection of hers. I have the KKW X Mario collection palette. This I really do like. This is from their first collaboration. I think it's good, easy colors. It's not an exciting palette, but these have every color that you need, and I do like the quality of her shadows. I think they're fine. And then when she came out at Ulta, I purchased two of her palettes at Ulta because my KKW collection is very limited. What's this one called? This is the Class blossom palette. I can't lie. I've never used these two newer palettes ever since I bought them. I just... I've been focusing on other things because I know these aren't a hot topic on my personal channel, so I do need to use these because they are really pretty color stories. And then this one is just the classic, which, oh, this one is so pretty. I need to use that. Why haven't I grabbed the, these? I kind of put them in my drawer after I bought them. I didn't leave them in my new purchases bin. So I think that's how they got lost in the shuffle, but they are really pretty palettes. They're basic, but that's just kind of the whole vibe of KKW. I can't complain about that. And I think generally from what I've tried from her products, they're fine. They're good quality. You're not going to believe this, but we are on the final stretch. So I just have some random brands here, kind of one-off things that I only own one of. I have two Lime Crime palettes. So this is the Lime Crime Venus XL, which is their first one, I believe. I mean, I'm not a huge, huge pink eyeshadow fan, so I don't reach for this one that often, but I do like the Lime Crime formula, and if I'm looking for pink eyeshadows, this is a fun one to grab into. I just like the whole curation of Lime Crime palettes and just the artwork on it. So I have the Venus XL, but this one is my favorite. This is the Venus XL2, and I really feel like this is a unique palette in my collection. So though I like the XL, the XL2 is way better because it's such a unique palette. I think the shimmers in here are a really nice formula. I don't think they're exceptional, but they're a good formula. And this palette really inspires me. I create very different looks with this palette. And I think, generally speaking, the quality on here runs a little bit more sheer. I think the quality could be amped up. But I just love the curation of this. And I think it's so unique. And I've been liking the palettes they've been coming out with. I haven't been purchasing them because, obviously, I don't need them. But I enjoy this palette. 
it a lot. I have the Laura Lee Nudie Patootie palette, which I can't lie, it's so pretty, you guys. This is a gorgeous palette. I saw that she had these for super sale a couple of months ago, and I think mine is a little bit more dried out at this point, so I don't think it's going to work as great as it once did, especially because she has this really wet formula. But I honestly, if I can get this on sale, I wouldn't mind buying another one because I just love the colors here. It is a beautiful, more nude palette. You have different tones of nudes, and I mean, it's a beautiful palette. I can't lie. Look how old this guy is. And this is the Kat Von D Metal and Matte palette from, oh my gosh, years ago. This is old. I don't use it. I don't talk about Kat Von D on my channel too much either, if at all. I mean, this is a neat palette. I don't know why I haven't decluttered it. I just haven't because it's so big and I'm attracted to it. But this is like old Kat Von D. It's a good one. This is when Kat Von D was popular. This I purchased at Morphe a few months ago. This is the Nabla Cutie Patootie palette. I was just more so interested in trying the Nabla formula and also, I mean, do I need to say anything? about how beautiful this palette looks. This is an underrated, not talked about enough palette. Such beautiful colors. The shimmers in here are oof, killer. I really love this palette. I need to feature it on my channel at one point or another because it's stunning. I have this guy from Lunar Beauty. This is the Moon Spell palette. Really great quality. He has a very nice formula and the colors in here, I just love the purples. I love the blues. You just have a really great range in here. I like how there's not a bunch of colors, but you have a lot of variety. So every color in here makes sense. There's a reason it's there and it has its own purpose. Formula is good. The color selection is pretty unique and it's just overall a very good curated palette. And I, this is the only palette that I have from Lunar Beauty. I'm not opposed to purchasing more, but I have to say specifically the color story is what spoke to me about this one. Next, we have the Violet Voss Holy Grail palette. And I've said this before on my channel, but I can't get rid of this because... It's the only Violet Voss palette that I own, and I do like having something with the formula here. I don't really care too much for the colors. I think it's a boring palette. I don't reach for it too often. However, I will say the formula in here is really good. I find the colors to blend very easily with the times that I have used this. And for me, I just haven't reached for it because it's a boring palette, but I think it's a good palette. I think if I brought this on vacation with me or something or challenged myself to wear this for a week, I would enjoy my experience with this palette because I do like the quality. It's just not something that I I've reached for Violet Voss as a brand doesn't really excite me either, but it's a good palette. And guys, we've reached the end here. This is the last palette. This is the Tati Beauty palette, and I have a huge confession I need to make to you guys. I've only used this once. The only time I've used this is the time that I've reviewed it, and I don't know why or how that's happened. I know I'm a sinner, and... <laughs> So many of you guys are gonna be like, what is wrong with you? You're a crazy quarter lady and you need to use your makeup. It's a beautiful palette. The one time I've used it, I've liked it and I'm going to set this on my desk so that I can use it because I am ashamed to admit to you that I've only used this right, once. guys, that is it. Look at the mess I have created. This is my high-end eyeshadow palette collection. You can expect my next collection video to be my affordable eyeshadow palette collection. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I like these because I don't have to do my makeup for them. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I hope you take the time to do so because there will be more collection videos coming your way. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.